when you start collecting mushrooms, the first thing you should know is that basket is an ideal um, container for collecting mushrooms. It's, um, it has holes, the, the structure has holes, so the, the, the fruiting bodies which you collect can breathe and they don't get spoiled. If you collect mushrooms in a plastic bucket or in a plastic bag, that's the worst. And then there is a danger that they will kind of start fermenting, rotting. The temperature will be high if it's exposed to the sun. And also um, fruiting bodies might be damaged. So actually there are more poisonings with mushrooms because people collect them with their own, in their own containers. Because they carry them for hours and hours in plastic bags or leave them in the car. In Italy, actually, there is a regulation saying that um, you should collect mushrooms in these kind of containers with holes. They don't have to be wicker basket, but something which is um, which pr which lets the air. But the idea is that this is the way of spreading mushrooms. Fruiting bodies contain a lot of spores, and if you go around the forest with the basket, you are actually very effectively helping mushrooms spread. Uh, when you talk to most European um, mushroom collectors, there's a consensus that mushroom, the actual fruiting bodies, collecting the fruiting bodies does not affect mushroom populations. Actually, I met a lot of mushroom specialists who say that actually collecting mushrooms helps spreading the spores and also once you collect fruiting bodies, more come up. So the only concern actually with um, with uh, collecting fruities, fruiting bodies is that there are specific species of insects, for example, or snails, which for, for whom uh, these fruiting bodies are important food. And also we protect mushrooms, we, we create lists of protected mushrooms because we sometimes want to protect forests. And if you have evidence that this very rare mushroom grows there, it can be an argument for not transforming the forest, from not, not cutting it down, from not logging, etc, etc. This is the most typical basket for, uh, for collecting mushrooms, the simple one, but I prefer this one, which has divisions, because then you can separate, you can, uh, you can put a um, toxic species here, or a species that you are not sure about. You can also separate uh, particular species, and it's uh, especially good for small fruiting bodies. If you have a lot of... Uh, a porcini, a lot of saps, yeah, yeah, you, 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 you wouldn't bother about such a basket. Another basket is a basket which you carry on your shoulders. This one I got in Laos, in Luang Prabang. It's um, made by Kamu people who live in the jungle near Luang Prabang. Uh, it's made of bamboo and rattan, has rattan um, holders, but um, it's a, it's a fantastic basket, you can bring a lot of mushrooms, but I use it quite rarely. It's because um, when you find a new mushroom, you have to take it down or kneel and then all the mushrooms come out. So I use it only for collecting um, saffron milk cups, uh, because um, when they appear, they appear in large quantities and then I can go to a location when there's a lot of them, put the basket and then go around, collect for 10 minutes and then pick the basket, go to another location. And then if you want to collect a lot of mushrooms, bring like, I don't know, 30, 20 kilos, it really makes sense. Uh, the fourth uh, basket I wanted to show you is a, is a basket which you carry on the side of your body. You have a, um, a strap and you just put it across like a bag, like a laptop bag, and it stays on the side of your body, so your hands are free. You cannot carry a lot of mushrooms, but probably as much as in a normal basket. It's a fantastic invention. It's a modern basket designed in Krakow and was uh, at some point sold by Serfenta Foundation from Cieszyn. They make fantastic um, basket weaving workshops and they also promote old designs of baskets and also encourage designers designers to design ba baskets for modern people. So this basket originally was for carrying six bottles of beer to the beach or to the forest, but I chucked out the 
uh, fiber divisions inside and I just left the pure basket and I use it a lot. I use it often for classes, for example, put a few books and a laptop and students always look at me <laughs> surprised that they come like this. I also actually use this, if I have more books to carry, I use this basket to carry books into the classroom and then, or even for shopping, imagine going to Lidl with it. It's fantastic. Anyway, I hope you start mushroom picking now because it's September in Northern Europe. It's probably the best season for mushrooms. What is behind me is a beautiful young maple forest, actually sycamore, Acer pseudoplatanus. It's a common Central European species of maple. But there are no mushrooms in this forest and I wanted to tell you why it is so. I um, I saw this forest grow when I bought my land 25 years ago. It was an abandoned potato field which um, and I saw a lot of seedlings in it. There were sycamore, Norway maple, birch, black alder. With time I removed black alders, left the sycamore and Norway maple because it's um, for the future production of wood is more profitable, but I leave a lot of the older trees to rot, you know, to create more biodiversity, like here. Um, so the thing is that if you have acer species, you usually have very few or no edible mushrooms. You should remember about it. This is because of two types of mycorrhizis. So mycorrhizis is um, a relationship between the roots of plants and mushrooms. Uh, usually it's a symbiosis. Both, um, both sides get benefits. Mushrooms get the energy from the photosynthesis from, from the tree or another plant. And uh, plants get micronutrients which are absorbed by the mycelia and also the mushroom protects the plants by producing antibiotics and protects them from pathogens. So it's beneficial from both sides. Uh, my, uh, mycorrhizis is uh, extremely old. It's um, uh, over 400 million years old. So when plants came on earth, on, on land, they already started experimenting, we can say, with relationship with mushrooms. Um, and the oldest type is endomycorrhizis, uh, when the uh, mycelia live inside the roots of plants. And this uh, ancient type does not bring fruiting bodies in the forest. Um, and from this type, many times independently, arose ectomycorrhizis. Ectos means, uh, in ancient Greek, means outside. So mycelia grow around the roots of plants. And, and uh, with this type, it's very common to have uh, nice fruiting bodies, some of them edible. And then the type of um, mycorrhizis is closely uh, associated with the type of tree. So certain genera do not have ectomycorrhizis, like maples. So if you have maples of any kind, then they, there won't be fruiting bodies associated with the roots of trees. Also elms are like this. Also um, rosaceae species like rowans and maples and pears. So if you see these trees, you usually won't have ectomycorrhizis and nicely, nice edible fruiting bodies like, you know, uh, bolides, like chanterelles, uh, milk cups. They are all dependent on the on ectomycorrhizis. So typical ectomycorrhizis trees are oak, birch, fir, beech, hornbeam, uh, <clears throat> larch, spruce. They will all um, promise some uh, crop of edible mushrooms. But if you see a maple forest, no. There are some trees that have both ecto and endomycorrhizis. This endomycorrhizis is also called arbuscular macrorhizis. Um, uh, macro, um, mycorrhizis. 
Um, so um, watch out for species of trees. In many countries you have maps produced by forestry commissions where you can see, predict even when you come from far away, which is the dominant tree species. And of course you can have surprises because even in this ecosystem you can have single trees of other species and also um, you can have uh, saprotrophic fungi like uh, parasol mushrooms which do not need mycorrhizis or like um, for example oyster mushrooms. So in this forest I find parasol mushrooms and oyster mushrooms. So but I generally hurry. I generally do not stop here and go further to the oaks. Um, I forgot to mention, I started talking about it. There, uh, there are some trees which, which have both types of uh, mycorrhizis. For example, alder, for example, willow, aspen. They will have uh, these uh, two types. And this means that sometimes you can also find edible species under these, um, these genera. I talk about it because people usually don't know. People know that certain species are associated with certain um, tree species. They know that you can look for um, large uh, bolides under large, yeah? Or if you want to have uh, saffron milk cups, you would go under pine, spruce or fir. But do, they do not realize that there are types of trees that do not have any uh, uh, mycorrhizal fruiting bodies under them. And if they dominate in the stand, then, then just skip the, this piece of forest.